Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Daniel and Swirlbrain and Chris and Kevin. Welcome to another stream. How's everybody doing? Chris, is that a Prusa Mini you're building this week? Or what is it? Hey, DC. Just came from the Chris and David Switchwire build stream. So they're having a good time, it looks like. Morning, Greg. Hey, Disposable Elite. So today, we are going to do a couple of things, and I hope I have time for it within a reasonable couple or a few hours. Um, I want to install LED lighting um, in the top of the trident here and install the uh, Mandela kinematic uh, bed mount system. Evening Sanity. Evening Peacemaker. So I'm not quite 100% sure where I want to start. Um, I think I want to start with the LED mounts because I don't want to have to mess with the bed while I'm flipping the printer around. Um, I don't want to have to worry about whether it's going to come off the magnets or whatever. So let's um, get started. I am going to use a few things. So I'm going to use the extrusion mount segments made by Eddie. And those can be found on the Voron users GitHub under Eddie and it's LED bar clip. So, these, I printed out enough of these, and, and I mirrored one set, so I, I have a, a set for each side. I printed out enough of these because my green V2 is going to get them at some point as well. So there's a lot more here than I need, but I've got one version and then the mirrored version. So... These are the piece. And Eddie includes the step file or fusion file, um, which is nice because depending on the particular spacing of your LEDs, you may want to change the size of this. So you have, in my case, I'll have a pair of LEDs poking through each segment. What do we got? Hey, Jaeger. Welcome to the stream. Um, the reason I mirrored one set of these is because I want the, the shield part to be at the front. And if I did that then I would have a segment showing so the whole point behind these is that first to some degree when you're looking at the printer from the front you don't get blinded by the by the LEDs so if you go let's see if this will give us a an angle Oops, sorry so if you do like this these go in and this is the wrong one, but it snaps into the extrusion right here. And that's what we'll be doing. So let's figure out first how many, let me move this up a little bit. How many of these I'm gonna want per side.
we have? Oh, a couple of updates. So, for those of you who were on my Switchwire build stream, and I had trouble in the second stream with getting um, clipper going or mainsail going on the Pi, it absolutely turned out to be the download. Um, using all the same tools on my stream computer, I just grabbed the download that I used on the other computer and copied it over and it worked just fine. So someone mentioned, I don't remember who it was, but the um, someone mentioned that it was probably a corrupted download and that appears to be the case. It's interesting that Belena Etcher gave a, an error, but the Pi Imager did not. You would think that the Pi Imager would have had more trouble with it because it's actually trying to configure stuff, where Belena is just trying to write the image. So I don't need this to go all the way to the back. I'm just kind of eyeballing how many segments I want. I'll probably do something like that, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Maybe we'll go in even 20. There's nothing. There's no rule for how these go. So, yes, Sanity, they, these just snap into the extrusion slot. I don't have any good spot here to snap them in, but. So the other thing, little update from last time, I replaced, if you remember my build stream for this, how loud it was with those 60 millimeter steppers. Um, let's move this a little forward. And we'll even open up the doors to maximize any sound. And I'm going to home this. If any of you remember the god-awful noise that it made before, you'll notice the improvement. Even at that speed. I know my homing, I know my homing speeds are slow right now. Um, but that is... I, I don't notice it. I, I've got a, the, the green V2 here printing. I don't know. Can you guys hear that? I can hear it a little bit. I'm hoping it's not being picked up too much on the, on the microphone. But that's more than tolerable with me in the room. This is the same now. So, let's see, let's go ahead and turn this off. So I'm gonna just shut down the, shut down the computer and start playing around in there. And... How is the sound? Music, music sound good? Is this printer too annoying? Good. Charlie's chilling on the other desk. Okay, this is turned off. Turn it off and unplug it. So let's move this over here. And what can I do here? Hey, BBs. You don't have music. Let me try turning it up. Oh, it stopped. I think it's between songs. Because it should be playing right now. I can hear it. Let's see what we get there. Hey, you can see. So these guys... I want the other version, and I'm going to take another detour here. So these are all individual segments printed. There are 20 of them. 
So your top surface quality is going to be important for these, for the LEDs to line up. A 0.1 millimeter difference um, of over extrusion or whatever is going to multiply by 20 across that. So I am going to, and I've already done this for the other one, so you don't have to sit here and watch me sand on uh, a bunch of these, but I'm just gonna knock that down. And then these, so I'm going to knock that down for each one, but these then just snap in there and push to the to the end. And I'm pretty sure I can get the LED segment in there after these are in, so I don't think, we'll see. Hey Chris, watching my stream while you're on stream, that's awesome. Thanks for stopping by. What else do we have here? Hey, Ju uh, Justin 3D. I think I did I say hi to you before? Hey, Derek. In NLTMW, welcome. Tunke, you got a whole bunch of new people. This is awesome. That um, switch wire kit really was a joy to build. Um, even being a, kind of an evaluation, making sure everything's good, um, there are very few things that n need to be addressed. Lightly knocking down any top layer over extrusion before I put them in. Hi, John. Welcome, all the new folks. Chris sent you guys over. That's awesome. This is pretty much what I try to do here. I try to just kind of share builds. Um, so far, it's all been streams. Just kind of whatever I feel like doing that I think can be of use to folks. Hopefully you get a tip or two. Maybe I learned something from chat. It's definitely happened already. Just a couple more of these. And we'll cut our LED strip to length. All right, two more probably. Dropped one. Butterfingers. Two more. We'll see how that works. We can always pull some. Justin, on the green V2 here, which I probably print with the most because I'm working on the other one, um, I don't. I don't have to change the Z offset. Technology, you're talking anti wobbler on Trident for Z? I'd like to, I, I don't know. 
Um, if you have some link or something I can review later, I might have a take on it. Hey Mikey, um, Voron Trident or 2.4? So I have a bias to the Trident. I mean, I designed or designed the assembly, designed the Z, um, designed the skirts. That's my bias. Um, I think a, a, a new builder, a, a more fresh builder, this is an easier build than, than uh, 2.4. Uh, you have a little less um, complication to worry about in the belted and flying gantry on a 2.4. Um, although there's the appeal, the 2.4 is cool that the, the whole thing moves. Um, I'd say for a new builder, I'd lean, I'd lean towards a Trident. Someone who has some experience, it's a toss up. Um, technology addresses, send me a, send me a DM on, um, on Discord. I'd like to see it. And I'll, I'll look it over and maybe I'll have a take next stream. I will say the carefully um, installed and quality components, I'm not seeing any, um, I don't know if I have a good print here, but I'm not seeing any evidence of Z-Wobble in my prints. So, okay, so I bought these, uh, these are 24 volt, 4000k LED strip off Amazon and I think it was the LED quantity is 120 pieces per meter just in 3d my X carriages XY carriage don't make any noises at speed not that I can hear so I'm just gonna cut these two let's see where the so these LED strips have cut points, so you can you cut them every so many LEDs. So you can't cut them in between there and have them work. So I need to figure out what. Ooh, and there it goes. <laughs> what set I want? So I think I'm going to add one more segment, and that will put me at 21 each side, and that'll cover pretty much full coverage on this on this strips it doesn't have to go the whole way really if I went a whole segment less um, I would get plenty of light still um, let's see what do I want to do do I want to do that I might do that just for economy of LEDs and ease of assembly so I'm gonna cut this to how many segments is that? One, two, three, four, five, six segments. And cut it right down the middle because I need to be able to solder to the end. And I'm just going to cut two of these right off. Looks like I have plenty left to do a few more printers. Bit private. I bought genuine Highwind rails and some of them are kind of stuttery at very low speeds. Which rails do you use and do they have the same issue? Mine are cleaned and lubed with EP2. Are you sure they're genuine high wind? Um, depends on the source. They could not be. Um, to answer your question, most of my builds are with LDO rails. My original V2, I have robot dig rails. And I think that's it. I haven't tried. I haven't bought any of the CNA rails. And I haven't noticed any issues. Um, with that they've all been cleaned lubed they all run smooth
Okay. So, and I'm going to leave the adhesive backing on these strips. I'm never going to remove it. Um, I want to be able to pull this apart if necessary. So my plan is, so we're going to run, oops, probably a couple fewer of these shields. And I'm going to run a short connector to this back corner and put a, uh, a short wire and then put a connector here in the far back corner. Um, and then for the other side, I'll run a wire along this top rear extrusion and maybe take it on the underside so you don't see it to the same, to a connector here. Now for the connector, I'm thinking of using a DuPont. That sounds a little wrong, but if I use a four pin DuPont, I can run jumpers right within that and, um, plug them in right side by side. I don't know if that's a great idea, but I'm going to try it. There's any, any number of ways. You, I could run the wires all the way in and not put a connector up here at all. But let's see what it's going to take. So I have, and this is probably an expensive way to do this, but I have some of my um, 24 gauge PTFE insulated wire here. And So I was thinking about that low tech. Why not microfit? Because I'd have to have two connectors. Um, a Dupont, a four pin Dupont is going to take no space in the corner. And I can, I can almost put a piece of um, VHB on the side and just adhere it to the side of the extrusion there. Let me see if I can... If I take a, I don't know how well this is going to work, but a, a four pin DuPont, you can put two two pins right next to it and plug them in. So. I don't think I can get any more compact than that. We're playing. It may not be the best way, but I'm gonna try it. There are male and female terminals, and that means that I'll have exposed wire or terminals coming out of a connector. Um, but if I make sure that's the ground wire, it should be okay. We will find out. So. A lot of this is going to be just kind of looking, let's see, I don't know how much, oops, sorry. Let's see if I can do it this way. Sorry for the shaky cam. Yeah. I'm going to put this up in here and that's going to go right to the end. So now for my wire length, I'm going to just grab one length here and this is a lot of just hold it in place and guess, make it a little long so I can cut short. So I'm probably going to just do something like that for these two. So something nice and short for the first one. I'll match it with the, the red. Now we're gonna do some soldering. I'm gonna get one of these set up and then 
duplicate that to the other one. Let's see. I have the 1.8 frame I'm converting to Trident for PLA only. During the live stream you guys did, you mentioned that if not using the side panels, you don't have to lower or redrill certain extrusions. For if you're building a Trident from a 1.8, you still want to redrill the vertical extrusions uh, because on 1.8, the bottom wrench access hole, blind, blind access hole, is 30 millimeters up, which means you won't be able to use the whole skirt setup as is. Um, what you won't have to do if you're if you were coming from a full 1.8 build, you would have had panels that are 30 millimeters too short. If you're not going to enclose it and you're only going to print materials that don't require the insulated chamber, then you don't have to replace. I mean, you can just not put panels on it. I really recommend following the V1.8 to Trident frame guide on the GitHub because aside from just making things fit, the guide also has us moving the these Y extrusions down 20 millimeters, which for you, if you're not enclosing it, it's not as big of a deal, but it gives more room for the, the PTFE um, to filament guide tube to, to move around up here. But also, if you follow the guide, then all the rails, everything lines up properly. If you don't follow the guide, then you'll have to figure out where you need to put your linear rails to make, make sure you can hit Z0 and, and stuff. So, did that... I hope that explained it well enough. Okay. Get some tools here. Get my soldering iron... And swap out for a soldering tip. Is the Z the only difference from the 2.4? Now, for the most part, um, the, the Trident has a rigid gantry and the bed moves in Z via three lead screws. On 2.4, we have a floating gantry and the bed is fixed on the bottom. The gantry parts, the XY joints through X are exactly compatible between the two printers now. The front idlers and the rear stepper mounts are unique, but they're based on the same parts. These are just regular LEDs. I'm just gonna power them. They're just white LEDs, 4000K temperature. Um, they're just, I'm just gonna be able to set them basically on and off. Welcome to Stream Kennedy. So let me get moving on this. My glasses for when I need them. temperature a little higher for soldering grab my other tools I don't think I'll need them but helping hands just in case I don't know if I had a whole lot of choice on the color temperature on Amazon I think they're fine. I, the, I've only installed LEDs in one of my printers, and that's the purple Trident. So this is the second go around. Minor revisions in how I do it, but I'm, I'm learning here too. So we'll see how it goes. Where did I put one strip here? Where did I put the other one? Hmm. So these should be marked positive and negative. Let's see if we 
can get at least a decent view of my soldering prowess, right? <laughs> uh, see what we have here. Positive is that side. Let's go ahead and use the strip. See if I can get that to focus a little bit. That'll work out. Okay, now we're gonna put. I think we're gonna use one. How do I want this? I want. I'm gonna alternate the, the gender of the pens here. So I'm going to have a two pin DuPont. Oh, let's turn off the starting iron. Two pin DuPont. I want the ground to be the socket pin on this. So let's go this way. the other side to the the power to be hidden in the in the connector just having ground poking out This is, as long as I'm consistent, it doesn't really matter how this goes. up with a little connector there I think I'm gonna just get put a just a little twist in this wire just to hold it together make it easier to manage in the in the frame
What do we got? The other, Chris says, the one other question I have about the conversion is that I just printed the drill guide and the hole for the drill, it's only about two millimeters. And that's because it's a pilot hole. Um, it's, it's only there to help guide your drill bit. Yep. I'm assuming that it's just a pilot hole there for a bigger bit. Yep. So you want probably a minimum of five millimeter. You, you just need your whatever wrench you're using to be able to fit with a little bit of play because you may have to move things around. So you probably want a minimum of five millimeter. I usually go five and a half um, or six, but keep in mind that the extrusion slot width is six millimeters. So you don't have, with a six millimeter um, drill, you don't have any wiggle room. Use that guide um, and make sure you um, secure your piece. And if you're drilling by hand, be extra careful because your drill bit with a six millimeter or larger bit is going to have a tendency to try to walk along this extrusion. So if you can clamp it in place and use a drill press, then you're gonna have more luck. And if you're really careful, you should be able to just sneak a six millimeter drill bit um, through there and maybe just barely kiss the edges of the slot. But I would, I would try five, five and a half millimeters or whatever the um, equivalent is. Okay, so I'm gonna test fit this and actually just kind of leave it in there, I think. I'm kind of doing this blind. All the way in? Yeah. I think we can see that in there. I think that'll work. Seems to set well. Now, where did I put my other LED strip? Oh, it fell. <laughs> This one, I do the same thing, but I need to go all the way across the back. Kind of gauging where my connector is going to be. guess right there. Let's see how lucky I am with my guess. Yeah, I, I always start with a, a two or three millimeter bit and drill all the way through. And Corey's right, a, a center punch would not be a bad idea or if you have a, a center drill. So, hopefully this is long enough. Same, same process. Except I'm not going to connect or crimp the connector on until I test, test fit it.
little too shaky. Hey Mel. Hello Steve, just out of curiosity, why are those 3D printed parts so short? You could easily double the length or even triple it and use some screws. Yeah, absolutely. You, there are a lot of different options that you can do for mounting these LED strips. I chose to use these segmented pieces um, that Eddie from the, the crew um, posted on Voron Users. Um, it's here at Voron Users Printer Mods Eddie LED Bar Clip. Uh, but there are lots, I, I think there are several options out there and it wouldn't be too difficult to come up with something else. Um, this is just what I chose to use. Plenty of options though. Okay, I'm going to snap these shields in place. Ooh. Oh, I caught it. <laughs> That one is awfully loose, so I'm going to ditch it. I, I have been soldering for, I don't know, I took an electronics class as a freshman or sophomore in high school where I, I, I learned we had a very interesting um, teacher my, my electronics class teacher in high school was was unique um, he was one of those old guys who would sit at the front of the class holding each end of a power cord plugged into the wall as he's lecturing his internal resistance or resistance of, on his skin was high enough that it didn't bother him. Oh, there's Charlie once out. He'll be back, I guarantee it. Corey, I'm doing a similar color scheme as your green 2.4 and plan to laser the bottom and back panels from red oak ply. Ooh, that'll be nice. And fiberglass it. Anyone know of DXF files for the Voron of the Voron logo? I think it's available somewhere. Um, I'm sure if you ask on Discord, somebody will post the DXF file. Yeah, my high school teacher, Mr. Wagner. He he was nuts, but he was a lot of fun. He he was. Um, by far my favorite teacher at the time. Is that the same length? Yep. Okay. We spent a lot of time in that class playing with um, like Leiden jars and Von de Graaff machines and um, a very popular um, activity was to uh, take large capacitors, core out a foam ball and put that capacitor in the foam ball with the leads wrapped around it and then charge it and then toss it at somebody. <laughs> no, Ben, he, he could actually hold on to an outlet wire. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, he wasn't messing with us. Hi, DJ Natty, welcome to the stream. I'm just installing um, LED strips on the trident here. Once we're done with this and have these working, we're gonna swap out the bed mounts with the Mandela Roseworks um, kinematic mounts, see how those work, see how much Z travel we lose. I think it's right about 15 millimeters. Um, I had to cut a new Z end stop pin, so I had to measure that ahead of the stream. I haven't got any feedback from you, Mo. Mo, what are you what are you looking for? What feedback? Remind me. I get a lot of DMs, and I and I, I'm I, I get caught up in my project. So if I if I didn't respond, it wasn't intentional. So I 
Uh, these are 24 gauge wires. I'm just using the wiring I have on hand for the LEDs. Uh, what do you think? Should I have another or I say if you already have a Trident, it's a lot of fun to build multiple. That's why I have all of them. Hi, Nathan. Hey, Sanity. I, I only have one kit. Um, I may, if, if it works out well, I may buy another one. But... Just test fitting my length here, and I may have gone a little short. Yeah, I went a little short. I need to go another. I need to redo that. Oh well. Justin three, did you ever do the titanium strips on top of the 2020 over the linear rails to seven? I have not done that yet. Um, it just hasn't come up in the in the list. Okay, so I think I only need a couple more inches here, so I'll go three. And I can always cut it short. I, I thought I was going long on the last one, but apparently not. It's okay. The Wire will just go in the spare PTFE wire box and I'll use it for something else later. Do the titanium I've sent you multiple suggestions about the key back replacements in a news nine for a temporary mount for the ADXL or even an emergency sensor. Yeah, I, I, I didn't quite understand what you wanted as feedback for the keyback. I think the if that works, then cool. See you, Nathan. Okay, let's do this again. Take two. And give me a second. Charlie already wants back in. You know, Mo, what I really need to do, and I, I, I like the additional sourcing suggestion, but I really need to just go out and buy one. I need to see if it's available for for me or if I can get it. I don't mind um, buying something and testing it because if we can add something as an alternate source, the only concern I have is it needs a, it would you need a unique printed part. Uh, that's not a big concern. Um, let me revisit that and look to see if I can even get it. Because I'd want to see um, the little details about it, whether there are any any concerns I might have, and I can't really tell that without having it in my hands. So, okay. There we go. Charlie's 
Charlie is doing well. He um, is not getting enough attention. Hi, John. Hi, Sanity. Prusament ASA Signal White. I The only ASA I have from Prusament is their orange, which I printed the accent parts on my original Trident, or switch wire, and the Stellar Black, which I haven't actually printed yet. Um, the only thing we saw with the ASA is it tends to be just a little more brittle, but I don't know if it's to any degree of being a problem. I think I've shown... I don't know where they are right now. I think I showed the little test pieces I broke. It tends to snap um, at a certain point instead of bend. Thanks, Mo. I'll, I I will check that out. Like I said, I'm not not I'm not ignoring you. Um, I just wasn't quite clear what was going on. So we'll we'll look at it. Is that a, the, did you send me a link that's um, U.S. sourceable? I don't know where you are, so. I'm just pushing the end because the end will tend to get caught. Okay. Now we're going to go under here, and if this is still short, then I'll be very annoyed, but I think we're good. Okay. Where is all my stuff? Let me see. Let's see if I can find the little pieces. These were my test pieces. So this is Prusament ASA. Now, this isn't fully scientific. I mean, Stefan at CNC Kitchen does a much better job of this. All I did is take this and just bent and trying to use the same force this is, um, I think this is KVP Stellar Black. The same type thing. It, it broke, but it bent. This snapped. Awesome. Thanks, Mo. I'll get back to you. Um... Okay, I put that in there. So I'm going to secure these in the extrusion slot with that um, open build slot cover stuff wherever I set it. It's this stuff. I buy, I buy it in, I think, one meter lengths, and I have a lot of, or I used to have a lot of remnants. I'm not going to put it as a continuous piece across the back since it's up here underneath and I think it'll make it easier for maintenance. I'm just gonna cut little pieces and kind of stitch it across. A printed part would work perfectly fine there too. I just have these and this piece will get, be good. So I'm just gonna cut little 10 millimeter or so sections and just a few of them to hold the wire up out of the way. I need to put a connector on the end. So that's gonna go there. I'm gonna have one there and there. I'm gonna have one there. And this is gonna go here. So I wanna make sure that these go to about the same spot. And go underneath on this one. So I'm gonna throw one of these in temporarily just to help control that wire so I can better measure the final length. Something like that. I need to cut. I 
those off by about an inch. So remember I said two inches more and I went three. <laughs> That's pretty good. There used to be a vendor in Europe that imported KVP. I don't remember who they are, and I don't know if they're still doing it. Make her make something. Okay, now I'm gonna put a connector on the end, end of this, matching the way I did the other one. What I found, what I'm trying to do with these these crimpers, because the because the Dupont connector has that um, angled um, insulation part, the part that crimps onto the insulation, I'm using the larger size of the of the crimper here because it's wider and I'm able to get it into a general shape, and then I'm just progressively going down because if you don't get that crimp small enough, it won't go into the DuPont connector. So I'm just working it down slowly. Okay, so we have this. Let's see what I did on this one. I wanna make sure that we're gonna plug in consistently. I'll be able to see the colors when I plug this all in together, but I wanna make sure it's consistent on the connector. on this there's no reason for the twist other than to help wire management so I don't have to control two wires I'm basically controlling one bundle Yeah, Jaeger, this is only my second printer that I've done the LED lighting on. Okay, those are both going to go there. Let's go ahead and put them in. I don't know how many people saw, but I was pretty pleased. I, I think it... 500 subscribers, um, YouTube turned on community posts, so hopefully that's handy. I did post a question out there, what kind of quick build content you might like to see, be interested, kind of like the V0 display I did, stuff that'll take about an hour, 
is what I'd, I'd like to keep and not consistent. I don't need to do a quick build every week. Just stuff that if, if someone wants to see something, something we can cover. Yeah, DC, the the snap-in covers are open builds. They're designed for V-slot, but they work perfect in here. Um, all the top-facing extrusions on the bottom, I've put it in to make cleanup a lot easier. You can just wipe, wipe everything out. Kennedy, I am using a WaveShare 4.3-inch screen with a mount from the user mods community that... Um, I did some very minor tweaks on, like closed up some of the hexes and changed the front logo. Um, it works well. The only thing that's a little odd and you just get used to it is when you hit, go to open the door, it's very easy to activate the touchscreen. So I tend to grab at the top all the time. Um, but I'm, I'm running this with clipper screen. I do have, supposed to get here today, the Big Tree Tech version of this size screen um, that I want to put on the purple trident. So I don't know what modifications it's going to need to fit a mount or whatever, but if, if it needs anything new, I'll, I'll, I'll make it available. Awesome! I have 50 viewers. I think that's like the second highest stream. My first Switchwire build stream was by far the most. Let's see. Yeah, if you if you search, it's it's kind of hard to find on Open Build's website these slot covers. Um, but I think if we just search for Open Build's slot cover, yeah, right here. Open builds parts store, and they're not—they're not expensive. I don't think their shipping was super cheap. I mean, you're going to spend several times the cost of the of the pieces in shipping, but I usually buy the one meter stuff, and I'll buy several at a time. And it's available in multiple colors. It's—it's it's neat. Um, I the material. So the stuff that comes with the Creality printers is a lot more like soft. Um, soft TPU like this is more of a, a medium plastic almost and it's probably made out of ABS I haven't tried bending one to see but or maybe it's not ABS it's um, I don't know what it is but it's it's a more firm plastic anyway um you have the BTT screen, Justin 3D. What what size and what um, what mount did you use? I'd be curious. I have tried for some fun. Can't seem to get them stuck to my genuine press of bed. Hey, John, for almost everything, and and I might get laughed at for this, I use glue stick. So I use a very tiny amount of glue stick on almost every surface that I print on. I'll, I'll put it down and then I'll get a. a paper towel fairly wet with IPA and spread it around to where there's almost not there and I don't have any problems. So it's worth a shot. It, I've used purple glue stick and the stuff that comes with the um, Prusa Mark III. What print settings did you use for Eddie LED nodes? I, I, sorry, I don't, I don't remember. Um, it's just my regular profile. Same, I mean, I probably didn't change perimeters, anything like that. I probably just left everything alone. So probably five, five, and four perimeters. You get so much money, I built so many printers. Uh, Tushar, this is my main hobby. I'm, I, I enjoy building them. Um, it, it, uh, as many of you probably know, you build one printer and you're probably going to end up with spare parts. Um, <laughs> quantity, uh, economy of scale comes in. Um, I do, uh, honestly, I get some things for evaluation now, so it helps. Um, uh, 
Let me see. Very well, all the five. <laughs> this this is my main hobby. I, I don't spend on much else. So okay. Where are we at? We are putting these in place. I have both of them in place. Now we are going to guesstimate the amount of wire I am going to need to go from there to the controller. So let's put these little segments of slot cover back in so get everything kind of in position. all of my ABS prints at about 110 C. I have a very fine amount of glue stick on the bed. Um, I don't know what else might be useful to know. Jarrett, welcome to the stream. What is the Solid Fork? Solid Fork is a pretty cool little um, cross between a V0 and a Trident. Come up by one of our contributors, Yeri. I think I said that right. I have not seen where it's at in its development, but from what I saw last, it looks cool. It's on the same... Uh, line as like the Micron that Hart um, developed. This trend of miniaturizing and crossing all the printers with um, with a V0. <laughs> Let's see. Speaking about it, any plans to enter? I have a um, original Elegoo Mars. I very rarely use it. I'm not a big fan of just the cleanup. There's nothing wrong with resin printing as far as whatever. But for what I do, it ends up being more frustrating than it's worth. Let's see if we can see how those look so far. So I've got it stitched into place. Oops. Pull this one back. Oops, sorry. So, all the LEDs are up in their spot. So now we're going to run from those two connectors down to the base and figure out how far we need. You know, I, I don't know if it's I like to tinker, I like to build. Right now, there isn't as much opportunity or benefit for that in the um, in the resin um, world. There's some things you can do, but you pretty much have to start from a from an existing printer, and you don't with these. Pretty much come up with an idea and build it. Charlie wants out again. The master calls. Usually I have the door open there and he can come and go as he pleases. But um, lots of activity going on in the kitchen so I didn't want it to come up on the stream. Um, so on the bottom here the octopus is kind of near the front. I think I'm going to end up 
just cutting a fairly long length of wire and just accept that I'm going to have some waste. Because if I was just for the efficiency of the stream, I think that's what I'll have to do. Why was that saying? Um, so I'm going to come from about there, I'm going to have to go into the deck, I'm going to have to go somewhere, let's say there, and then, which side is the octopus on? Yeah, the octopus is clear on the other side, so let's go about here. I'm guessing that is about what I'm going to need. So put a little bend there and double check my... I'm, I'm really hoping that I end up with a lot extra. So, there to there. There to about the fan. And then front to there. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be more than enough. Oh, I see, Mo. Um, there are no plans, nothing, nothing, nothing in the works for anything custom in the resin printing world from Voron. Not to say that won't happen sometime, but there is n uh, nothing. I don't understand, I don't quite understand the software situation with resin printings too, to resin printers. Something to do with the controllers and Chidu box having a kind of a lock on those. Okay, so we are gonna go with it. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna take our scrap from the last time and I'm going to make a couple of um, jumpers that so I'm just going to jump them right at the four pin connector so let's strip this first these are going to be really short Gonna make them longer than they need just to make it a little easier to manage, but I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. This PTFE wire is so slick, especially a, a short piece like this. Nice sharp stripper helps. Okay. Two of the socket pins. And two of the other side. my four pin I forgot where I put my stuff I dropped stuff drop stuff or I set it somewhere else there's one thing. Oh. oh, 
crap. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think you can see. I pushed one of the RC cars off of its little hanger mount area. There. This guy. It's a early edition or early build um, Team Associated B64. Of crap hanging everywhere. Okay. I don't know where my little four pin DuPont connector went. I, mean, I had a whole box of them, but I had one that I had pulled out. Let's grab a new one. <laughs> oh. I'm just making sure that I wire this properly. noodle this. Let's bring this guy up here. Okay. So. Hi, Felena. Welcome to the stream. Okay. Let's go socket. Charlie, you're in my way. I don't know if this is going to work as well as I think it is. Um, it's not going to work as well as I think it is. I can't get two wires into one. I can't get two wires into one thing, which is what I'm relying on. How can I fix that? Charlie, how can I fix that? I'm saying just force it. See if it'll force. I'm gonna try it. to try it. monster yet? Yes, Charlie. 
Helping <laughs> uh, you behind the scenes, yep. He is starving for attention. I gotta get mo moving. Okay, so what I did, and I don't know if this is gonna work, we're gonna try it. This is just the little connector. If I can get that into the um, into the housing, then it'll work. But this is just so I can wire these LEDs in parallel. So, this goes here, this should be the outside pin. Actually, we'll go this one. It worked! Woohoo! I think that... Yep! got it in the right spot so that is what I was after it's just to make a little a little jumper and that worked out so we will continue Could have ran individual wires for everything. Uh, this seems to be okay. Okay, so now I have my power connector for my LEDs. Where are we at? I have the original Fortec with, oh, the Fortec is a um, Traxxas, right? That's their on-road car. I've had so many RC cars. I. I <laughs> I tend to build a lot of them and not do much with them after they're built. 3D printers seems to be more sustainable for me as far as doing something with them, mostly because I can use them to build other printers. <laughs> I'm just putting a little twist in this once again, just to control the wires. 
I would be better off with my drill, but it's in the other shop. You know what, it would probably take me less time to go get my drill and twist these real quick than to sit here and twist this by hand. I'll be right back. the very end but I'll I'm banking on having enough I lost it again this PTFE wire is so freaking slick Maybe it won't be quicker to do it this way. I can't get these to... Let's try this again. I don't know if I can get all of this on. <laughs> twisted and I can pull on this to kind of loosen it up a little more it doesn't need to be tightly twisted I do that more tightly and more purposefully for the PT100 temperature sensor wires um, this printer if you remember in my stream that's another thing that I had problems with. I, I'm running a PT100 sensor. It's a custom Kinovo heater pad with a PT100. And I also had one in the tool head. I was getting random max 3185 or whatever the sensor is under an alter, uh, under and over voltage errors that I'm still troubleshooting. So as part of that, I've swapped the tool head to a PT1000 and left the PT100 in the bed because that's the most difficult one to change. And I'm gonna see if I continue to have problems or not. I'm not sure what's causing it. Mm, what do we got? That V, Mr. Mr. K82, welcome to the stream. That V0 display under purple trident is looking funky on video. Video. The V1 display or V0 display under the purple trident. You can see that. I mean, way back, way back here. This guy here. Is this what you're talking about? Um. I don't know. I can't see what you're seeing. It must be on video. Okay, this. John Pollock, is there a there's a guy on YouTube called Johnny Q90. Have you seen him? Let's see. What 
there's all that. That's all the. I'm not logged in, so this is all the generic recommended videos. Um, Johnny Q90. Oh, I have uh, th this stuff has popped up in my feed. Um, this looks insanely cool, uh, but I haven't watched any of them yet. Just this the scale engine is that. Yeah, I'm all over that. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to check it out. Is 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 um, videos are pretty good. It sounds like. I'll check them out. Corey, I've been looking for some GE5C spherical bearings in the U.S. and the prices go from $15 to $30 a piece. It can't be normal. The GE5Cs are very difficult to find domestically at a reasonable price. You may be able to check some of the um, some of the Voron vendors maybe carrying them. I don't know if DFH does um, or um, some of the other, other guys out there. Alternatively, the IGUS bearings, it's what I'm using in this printer. Um, direct from I guess are about five dollars each um, then you add shipping I don't know what shipping is end up being but there are other sources oh down here yeah that that's a that's that is definitely I can see it on my preview that's that's all on the camera you don't see that in person um, who was that? Who was mentioning that? Mr. Mr. K. That that is definitely what's coming off on the camera. And if that's distracting, we can do that. <laughs> that's my blue. That's my original V0 that I built. It's still the V0.0 whatever with a um, a Bowden setup and it's one of my go-to printers for small quick builds or prints so you can't be serious this is a 4.3 inch wave share touchscreen it does not pivot okay i'm gonna run this wire because we got to get this going we still have to install some some mounts i'm going to i have a so I'm gonna run this down that rear extrusion slot, but I have some of this. Um, covers in the, what is gonna be the best way to get this out? Slot covers in the, in the extrusion. So I gotta figure out the best way to snag that to get it out. Probably a smaller screwdriver. There we go. I have a piece of this slot cover in there. Now I can run this through and into the deck area. And I'm going to plug these in. Give you a view of this here in a second. There we go. And I'll secure that. But you can see the, the plug in there, and all the all the wire colors match up. So then I'll just put this on the inside here like this, and maybe just VHV it to the side of the printer, and it'll be very, or at least fairly. Discreet. Corey, it's Igus. Um, as I think Jaeger said, I G U S. And it's not G E five C. That's not the the um the model name. It in Mr. K it, it looks like it's the EGLM05, I think. However, if you go to the sourcing guide, um, it is an alternate source for those. Um, so you can you can find it in the sourcing guide. Put that 
cover on the back, and now we get to go down into the deck. Oh, everything is good. I don't know how many people actually put the bottom panel on, but I try to put it on all my printers. This swings pretty well out of the way, but so I can move around here well, I'm gonna take it off the off the hinges as well. Wow, we have 60 people. Or at least we've hit 60. Okay, let's see if I can get any. just going to go right across here and we are going to use one of the I'm just going to use one of the extra extruder outputs um, to control this it doesn't really matter which one let's see what I have available mine here let's see if we can get a little another shot here so you don't have to stare at the back of my head while I'm looking um, then I'm just going to use HE1 right next to HE0. So I've got to do a few, just follow my, my zip tie line. And I, I only ended up with about six inches of extra of unused wire there. That's not too bad. Let me grab my zip ties. That'll be enough. Oh, I've had the power off, Ken. I, I, I haven't had this printer on for a good while now since I've been working on it. Okay. I'm just going to run through the wire path and snip zip ties that are holding stuff together and replace them to tighten these a lot they're just controlling the wires especially since I I tend to get in here and do changes more frequently than you would think is typical
I'm going to HE0. How much can you guys see? There we go. I'm going to put this right here. So I'm going to cut this with a little bit of extra. Then I'm going to get out my ferrule connectors. These guys. And the very smallest ones. And then the crimper for them. Strip off a good amount. I don't know if that's too much, but we can trim the end. Ah, get out of the way. Yeah, that's probably a little too much, but that's okay. Yeah, see, it sticks out. Sticks out the end. We shall trim it. Paying attention to polarity. There we go. Tuck that down out of the way. And hopefully, unless I screwed something up, we should be able to get them to go. Yeah, lol, the, the ferrule crimper is one of the definite must-have tools, that, a set. I mean, you buy, you buy this, here, let's just go back here. You buy one of these kits, and you're gonna end up with sizes that you're probably never gonna use. But I think it, there's 200, of the white um, terminals, there's 200 of the gray, and those, those are going to be 90% of what you're going to use. And I've had that kit for a couple of years through all of these printer builds, and I'm not even close to running out. Okay. I am going to be daring and button this all up and assume it's going to work. Because <laughs> um, I don't want to turn it back over. If I don't have to. So we remember that we plugged that into HE1. So we'll go and figure out what, what pin that is for the configuration. Hey Corey, so this is the UHP series power supply. A so that's in in as opposed to the LRS series that's in the sourcing guide. So the LRS series is less expensive. The UHP series is almost twice the cost. The only reason I'm using the UHP in here is because I hadn't used it in any printer build so far. I wanted to try it. A lot of what I do is because simply because I want to try something. Um, the LRS series that's less expensive fits in here fine. This gives you a little extra room. Now you also see two power supplies in the sourcing guide because one of them is for the 
um, for the Raspberry Pi. In this case, I am powering the Pi off of the octopus. And that hasn't been a problem so far. Now, interestingly, I wonder if that has could have anything to do with my under -volt, over -volt, over voltage errors on the the Max 130s. 3185s. Hmm. I'll have to look at that. Um, or ask someone who might know better. But I only have one power supply because I'm powering the Pi off of the Octopus. To my knowledge, it's not causing a problem yet, but that, I don't know that. Um, okay. I think we are ready to power it up, enable the macros to turn on the lights and see if they work. Make sure everything is up in the right spots. They look to be. Let's put my filament guide tube back in place. So while that is powering on, yeah, Chris, that's exactly what I did is through their header on the octopus into the GPIO on the Pi. Let's go to here and let's go to BTT octopus GitHub. And we're gonna go to hardware and we're gonna look at their pin map. Scroll down here, HE1, and I'm gonna zoom in, oops. Err. It's not letting me. Okay. Um. Let's download that. Open the file. There we go. HE1 is PA3. So HE1 is PA3. So we're gonna go to reconnect. And I have this in my octopus config config file. And I, I pre uh, in, entered the um, all the macros. So let me uncomment this and right here for pin, it's gonna be that PA3. Now I'm going to uncomment all of this. And then there's a couple of macros here that just set that value to 0 or 1. Let's save and restart. So now if everything worked right, we should be able to go here and we see an LED on and LED off macro. Woohoo! Oh, I guess I should have. You can probably tell from there, but they are on. Check it out. Let's see if I get a better. Woo! That is bright. LED off. LED on. Let's see if we can get a, a view of the build plate with off on awesome 
What do you think? You can see it right here. Works first time. <laughs> Let there be light. Okay, second part of the stream. We are going to install the Mandala Roseworks. And they're all kind of stuck together here. These magnets are really strong. You don't want to let them hit against each other. Um, here, they're, they're buffered a little bit by the mounts they're in. Um, Aziz Light! Exactly. Um, so, that's what we're going to install next. First, I want to check my max Z travel so we can compare it to after. And I should be right at 250 millimeters. There's a possibility because I used a little taller um, bed mounts than is in the in the guide um, that I might be a hair shy, but let's find out. Yes, big success. I'm glad that worked. So we are going to home it. I should up all my speeds on this. I did on the purple trident. I raised all my homing and um, Z tilt speed significantly, but I hadn't gotten around to it on this one yet. And then let's run her real quick. Z tilt. Should be real close. Let's see. Um, see where we end. Oh. 0 0.02 off for the first cycle. It should finish it off with this one. Yep. Okay, now we're going to go G0. Oops, what did I do there? Z, let's go 245 just to start. This could, I could have upped the speed on that in the command, but oops. But we're just going to call it right there. 245 at where it's at. Let's bring that back up. So I have enough room to work underneath the bed. I see what you did there, lol. Okay, is that enough room for me to get under there? I think so. If not, I can move it by hand. I'm gonna shut down the printer and power it off. Corey, so the problem with a glass bed is if you use an inductive probe, your sense distance isn't gonna be enough to hit, um, to hit anything. So if you switch to like a clicky probe or something like that, then you're better off. Um, 
currently print on glass because it leaves a nice smooth surface. Well, PEI, smooth PEI leaves, leaves a pretty smooth surface. Are you looking for like glass smooth um, or just smooth? There's some glossy PEI. It's a little more difficult, could be a little more difficult to print on. Um, but if you're just looking for smooth and don't necessarily need it to be glossy, then a um, just a regular PEI would work well. But yeah, some of the clicky, the micro switch um, based Z probe solutions would be your another solution for you. So let's power this thing off. And slowly move the tool head out of the way. So we're gonna remove the bed, which requires disconnecting the thermistor. And I have it actually on the other side of these zip ties, so I have to pull those as well. Now this is only, I have not, I have installed the, the bed mount kit to confirm fitment, but not many times. <laughs> Oh, my Wago's on the bottom. Disconnect all of those. And the last thing would be the, the Z end stop connector. May not have to come off. That one doesn't have to come off. Put that one back in. I think that should be free now. missing. Oh, the ground. There we go. Yeah, the Wago connectors are, are nice. Let's set this somewhere. This is working out well. So these spacers are taller than the ones we spec by about a one and a half or two millimeters where I'm losing some Z height. The Mandela mount system consists of three main parts. There's a fixed point, and this is fixed in that the ball mount goes into that countersunk um, hole there and fixes that in place. We're gonna put that one, I think, over here. There's a sliding, uh, it restricts movement in a single dimension and allows movement in the other dimension direction that's going to go there and then the the ball mount rests in there and then there's a free mount and that goes in the rear and that allows uh, allows movement in both directions so this point is fixed this one is um, allows movement in one direction and the rear one allows in both directions so this is a early production kit so the hardware I'm gonna use is gonna be different from if you bought one right now um, based on my feedback he's commonized the fastener on all three I had to pick different um, different lengths to fit correctly in each spot that's that's all corrected you have the same fastener and then I think he includes M4 um, hardware and the t-nuts you need in the in the production kits and that's based on these are used and not just a Voron it's kind of across several printers um, so he decided to use M4s he includes those um, I'm gonna just use M3s with a t-nut just to get them in here 
the placing it and getting everything lined up is going to be interesting. I'm not exactly sure what that's going to take. The other thing with the trident is, and I've already done this, so it's not going to be as easy to illustrate, but on the rear mount, normally there is a spring-loaded T-nut like this one. Oh. <laughs> a spring-loaded T-nut like this one right here, and that sticks out past this printed part. It's critical that the the kinematic mount be flush against this plastic part. It needs to be as far back as possible. So that T-nut down underneath there, I've already swapped it out for a hammerhead style, an M5 hammerhead. That's already been swapped out so it doesn't interfere. This one, I'm just gonna move out of the way because we're not going to use it. Um, let's see, if you use a physical nozzle probe, you can, or if you use a smooth, you get a nice surface. Mo, I, I, I don't know, I haven't, I, did, I wasn't paying attention if one of these is wobbly. I don't think they are. It's probably a reflection, or the uh, potentially uneven application of the grease might be making it look, the light shining differently. Mo, what fasteners? Can you please post a link to the fasteners? Which fasteners? Yeah, so the last few questions, what's the point of these? It's, it's really about looking for a solution for compensating for the expansion of the bed due to heat and Specifically, I think they kind of market towards being able to heat up faster. Um, I don't know. I'm going to run these on here and see if I see a difference. On my original Trident, the purple one that I've been running for since March-ish, it's been printing. I still don't run a, a, a mesh on that. I can print a full plate without a mesh. I haven't seen any problems with the mount setup as we've spec'd. I haven't tried cranking it up to 100% um, power to the bed and seeing how that goes long term. This, um, I'll, I'll run this on here and see if over time, because this printer as well, I haven't I haven't set up a mesh on. If it if it looks like I need to start running a mesh, we'll find out over long uh, the long term. The one you're holding these th so i didn't post that thank you um this is the mandela mandala roseworks matched height kinematic kit that's what we're installing So these are going to, so I have these assembled and they have little button head screws holding an aluminum cap that holds this strong magnet in the middle. Now how these get lined up is going to be interesting. This one won't be too bad because I can reach the, the fastener. What did I use for a fastener in there? I can reach the fastener through the hole in the, in the thing. After fighting the... Now, centering this is gonna be interesting because I'm not quite sure what process. process is going to be best. So we'll see. So I'm just going to go 
somewhere over there. And I'm going to set this somewhere where it's not going to get attracted by anything. I take it back. I used M4s with M4 hammerheads. I'm just kind of eyeballing this right now. Take these old screws out. Let's see how that goes. And then the back one should be easy because it's just push it as far back as it'll go and tighten it down. time. It's figuring about a three hour stream today. Let's make sure my Z end stop wire doesn't get in the way. And all the way back. Tighten down, and then this can go back. I think I want to always have a finger or something on that magnet so it doesn't find something near it that it wants to go visit. That one is in place. These are, let's see. It's a little under 20 millimeters there, a little under there. These are evenly spaced side to side. I don't know if they're in the right space because this is a fixed point and this is going to determine how straight the bed is sitting. I think probably once I get this lined up, a measurement here would be a good reference point. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the stream. Let's let's do the do the thing. Everybody say hi, Jason. <laughs> okay. Um, technology, just this. So my build plate is. 254 millimeters square, which I think is the spec. Um, I had extra holes drilled in the back, and you can see it here. I had an extra hole drilled in each spot for the some screws I put in to locate the Prusa bed sheet. And I also asked them to chamfer the front so I have somewhere to grab the sheet to take it off. Does that answer your question well? So the 10 inches is the, the spec. 10 inches in um, the metric to inch conversion is 254 millimeters. That's why we spec it at 254. Okay, so these ball studs have just a nut on the back that should with a little bit of work, um, be able to jam in and tighten. Let's put a, where'd my little screwdriver go? Yeah, these don't have to be super tight. I'm going to grab my pliers. I don't know 
know if I have a... What are these? There we go. There. And that, that tightened up just fine. So it's just a, a nut that sits inside the countersink there. So I'm going to put those on all three spots. I'm trying not to drop this against anything. I don't want to scar up my nice pretty frame. Screwdriver in there, and just do a just tight. It doesn't have to be tight; just snug. And one more. Where did it go? It's sitting here. Chris, the Mandela, I think, is at their, their website says um, $88 for this set. It's a, it's a pretty, um, quite a bit to, to chew. So a, most Prusa beds are between 250 and 250 more, 54 millimeters wide. Um, or maybe it's all of the, the Prusa genuine ones are right at 254 wide. A lot of the others are 250. Hey JR Cromwell, welcome to the stream. Oh, thanks, Chris. Um, I'm going to set this on here as a test fit. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to put this mount back on. That goes in place. It goes there. Hey, Jimmy Jackson, what do you know about the STL for the mini afterburner for the 0.1 not fitting the hot end fan when using the Mosquito? I, I don't know because really with the with the Mosquito you have more space there. Uh, the reason the 0.1 went to a 7mm fan is because that's all you have space for when you're using like a Dragon or a V6. Well, V6 isn't supported. But a dragon or the dragonfly hot ends. Um, the mosquito is narrower front to back, so there's more room for a fan there. So there may be a problem that I'm I don't know about, uh, but I haven't heard anything. Okay, so we're gonna do a little test fit here. Drop this into place, and I am way off over here based on where I put this. <laughs> so see how that's riding up there. So I need to move this whole thing over that way. <laughs> By how much is a good question. I'm gonna do a little more, a little better measurement of this, I think. Um, from the center, so these are, should be seven millimeters in. 
from the edge. Yeah. So seven millimeters in, 200 and, or 126, is that right? 127 millimeters from the edge to the center. So 120 millimeters from the center of here to the center of here, is that right? So that's 254, 127, so it should be 120 millimeters to the center, right? Since it's the, that hole is seven millimeters in from there. What is going on here? Kind of by eyeball, that is very close. I don't know, this is far too much math. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. Put this up here where it's nowhere near anything magnetic. Sorry for getting in the way here. Yeah, hundred or two hundred and forty divided by two is one hundred and twenty. That should be correct. close we are. I mean, that'll work. One way or another, that'll work. Hmm. Something on my... <laughs> John, yeah, I, I, I know. I should have made a jig. But I think that's good. This will be good enough for us to, or for me to run it and test it. Well, let's, let's see one other little test. I was really close on my pin back here. So, let's pull the old pin out. Oh, that's, so that's, that's a, a point here. This is the old ZN stop pin. I had to increase it by 15 millimeters. And it still goes in the right spot. It's a little long, but that'll be fine. And it doesn't rub. It does not rub on the bed, so we're gonna call it good. Now I gotta hook everything back up. I don't think I can reach. Maybe I can. And now the question is, can I see? So I think I went here. There we 
go. I think this one goes to the end. Got the therm thermal fuse. Sure, all those are good. Have the bed. And then the other everything's tight. thermistor and a couple of zip ties to put in one-handed. How did I do that? <laughs> if I do it twice, does it count as skill? Or is it still luck? <laughs> no, I haven't missed the ground. I just low tech. Thank you though. I I, just, I saw that as I was as I was doing this. I saw the ground there needing to be done. Give myself a little more room to work. Uh. There we go. Ground is in place. All of this is good. I think um, someone, Low Tech Greg, had a good suggestion here. So let's see how we are. Yeah. Here, I'm just going to measure. We're right at 80 millimeters there. We are within a half a millimeter side to side. I'm not going to take all of this apart so I can adjust it that half a millimeter um, it'll be fine for now okay ground is attached thermistor is attached wires are managed plate is bed bed is on plate is about to be on I think we're good to turn it power it up and really I don't I don't know that there are any real quantifiable things that we could do to see how this is going to work long term on a stream other than this is how it gets installed and then we'll confirm I think we lose 15 millimeters 
or so of Z travel. I need to reset my Z end stop position. Um, yeah, and I need to do that before we can get an accurate Z travel. Connect. Let's turn those lights on because we can. And I plugged in my ZN stop. Yep. Tilt. That was quite a bit of adjustment. That was five and a half millimeters of adjustment. Got it to 0.08. And there we are, 0 0.0025. Aster Dreamweaver. We have finished the lighting and we've installed the uh, Mandela kinematic mount setup. So we are going to move this thing. Let's go 225. And let's go a little quicker than last time, I think. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> uh, that's my stream brain. I forgot to set the end stop. Yeah, we're about. Because that one is definitely about a millimeter off of the last one as far as the height above the bed. But we're at 225 right now. We can go to. 230 for sure probably 232 nope just barely touched at 232 so just under just over 230 millimeters of uh, travel so yeah we we were just over 245 before I did this so yeah we lost about 15 millimeters Astro Dreamweaver, the only um, the only thing that this does is allow for heat expansion and stuff of the of the bed. Maybe so little. Once you disconnect the um, your wiring, it's quicker to pull off. 
remove on the flip side of that if you're working on your printer and you forget to secure the bed um, it could fall it is not those magnets are not strong enough to hold the bed in place probably in any orientation other than mostly right side up so you do have to pay attention to if you work on the printer if you turn it on its side on its back you want to secure that bed somehow or remove it it does make it easier to remove a couple of connectors um, especially if you're using a, a, a Wago um, the Wago connectors for your for your stuff so. now everybody's mileage may vary on their particular setup and the plate they have and stuff so far on my tridents I haven't run a mesh even with the traditional mounts that we spec which are there because they're inexpensive they're easy to source um, and easy to assemble um, I haven't had to switch to using a mesh on these printers yet this is a both printers do have the Mandela um, build plate so does this printer I think I could get away without using a mesh still on this printer and I print probably the more than any printer I print on this one um, but I, I have a mesh just because my configuration already had it that I copied from my other V2. So at this point, we're pretty much done with everything I wanted to do on stream today. Uh, we'll hang out for a little bit. I can probably go through and s I need to set my, um, I need to set my Z uh, offset and I can play with that. But if there's any chatting you guys want to do, any questions I can answer. What kind of things do you want to see coming up on future streams? So the Green V2 is printing um, revised Z assemblies um, for a V2. printing them for this printer. <laughs> so if, if all goes well, I will not be doing a um, V2.4 build marathon, um, but I may do a build series. And Chris, I do want I do want to uh, install some sort. I don't I, I don't even know what different options are out there. Some sort of micro switch based um, Z end stop um, solution. I don't know if it's Clicky or Euclid or um, any of the other ones out there. I haven't done enough research to know which I go. I have a major uh, a concern with any of the solutions that rely on the magnet making contact so on the not on the well i guess on either side but not the magnet to magnet electrical uh, connection but the wire to magnet electrical connection i have a concern about long term with these setups i'd like to i'd like a better solution the euclid um, looks decent but i don't know enough about that one it uses screws um, to to ensure that electrical connection. Um, I'm not saying it's a problem. I have a concern that I haven't, I haven't built one, so I don't know how large a concern that is. That's just me thinking about what are the possible things that could go wrong with this. That magnet to wire connection that those rely on um, concerns me. Zenbender, if you were to implement an ERCF, which printer would you choose to put it on? 
I would probably pick either one of the 2.4s or one of the Tridents. Just no real reason why. Uh, probably a 2.4 um, over a Trident. Just because I think the um, filament path can be a little more consistent on the 2.4, especially for the heights that you tend to print. Technology just this, what wire cover is on the LGX. This is one that I modified for that. I am perfectly willing to share that setup. The problem is um, that it requires you to use an odd length screw because it, it the, the cable chain mount mounts the same way as a regular afterburner with screws going through the stepper. Um, however, it's a, it's a longer stepper on an LGX. So you need like a, a t I don't remember what it was. 23 millimeter screw or something like that um, to work. If you're if you if you want to cut a screw to the to the length, and I could tell you what length it needs to be, I just don't off the top of my head. Um, then I'm perfectly willing to share that. It hasn't become something I just released because it does require something very different, and it's hard to document that and make sure that people in, that are in, uh, using it and installing it remember that. Aster Dreamweaver. So for the LGX on Afterburner, it just requires a printed adapter to mount the LGX. And then what I just talked about with the with the wire cover solution is just a little weird right now. So I took Nemgria's LGX adapter and modified it. I added, I, I made it one piece. I added some features to just kind of make it flow with the uh, with the LGX covering a, a chamfer type thing, and then I edited the back so that it fits in with the um, for screw clearance for the MGN12 setup. Andy ADD won't heat cause magnets to lose their attraction property over time. Yes, but I very seriously doubt that for the time that you're using a um, one of those probe setups and the distance from the heat source that they're going to reach any temperature that wouldn't get anywhere clear close to um, affecting the magnets. Corey seems like the most popular hot end is the Dragon V2. Any thoughts? Well, let I me mean, just the general patent arguments and availability. I mean, we can't rely on something that's not going to be. Uh, available long term. We, we've got the Dragonfly instead. Um, we've got the upcoming Revo, which I'm I'm really excited about. I have a beta version. Um, I am absolutely on board with installing that on several of my printers, at least. And not just the the ease of swapping a nozzle benefit, but the you don't have to rely on anything being tight. You don't have to hot tighten your nozzle. You don't have to worry about that connection. Um, for all of that, um, you, you eliminate that whole realm of, of possible problems that you have with the with the old V6 ecosystem and relying on those your heat break and the nozzle meeting and being tightened enough to each other within the, the heater block. Um, getting rid of that is my main reason for wanting to switch. Yang Yu, is that right? Sorry if this is the question that's asked a lot, but are the benefits of the Trident compared to the 2.4? Um, it's a slightly simpler build, less complication. It's a toss up and debatable on print quality differences and speed differences. Zenbender. So my back to the ERCF. I, I could put it on a switch wire. It seems like that's what most people are doing though. Um, but also my switch wire is set up for the dual Y adapter with two M4s for dual color printing, and I'd have to swap all of that out. And the red Trident I just built on stream isn't going to be mine long term. 
so I wasn't going to do any major modifications to it. I was just going to run it. How's the print heat thing going? Which RFS teased a while ago. I, I'm testing a lot of stuff. <laughs> Most of which I can't talk about. <laughs> So, Sanity, um, I am working on the R2 release. It's not going to be major. I mean, it, I, I think that it came up in Nero stream yesterday. These are these are very minor, not worthy of a 2.5 release. 2.5 is not planned. There's no timeline for it. This 2.4 R2 is basically taking tweaks and things from Trident and merging them into 2.4, the, the MGN 12 X carriage. So the slight tweaks to the, to the panel mounts I made, the little tweak to the exhaust, um, the front display, not this, but the, the mini one, two, two, eight, six, four. Um, there are some tweaks to the, to the Z drives. That's, that's printing right there. <laughs> So and, and and you're right. I I, I am planning on doing a. It may. It's probably going to be too much content for a quick build, um, but that would be a great thing to do. It depends on what other things I have going on too. Astro Dreamweaver, if you DM me on Discord, I can send you whatever you're looking for. So a, a big part of not not necessarily um, all the tweaks for 2.4 R2, but just cleaning up the CAD and taking everything I've learned with working on the CAD on Trident and applying it to the, the Voron 2 CAD is going to be part of that as well. And I, I'm 90 plus percent sure the manual will get an overhaul to bring it up to the same level. Because, I mean, as, as you know, the, the Voron 2, is, I think, is our oldest printer out there right now and it, it um, the manual is the oldest version it has some updates in it to accommodate like the tweaks to afterburner that we did last may but just in 3d so my me doing this is pretty new um the content i've had so far um has been around building really building this and building the switch wire um, like today, doing the LED strips, I, if that's a mod, these kinematic mounts, anything that just comes up and sounds interesting to me is what I'm going to be doing. Um, I don't... I have lots going around in my head of, of stuff. I, I probably have months of content um, available. A lot of it is dependent on my motivation to be, do the prep work. Some of these projects um, that I could do and want to do take a significant amount of printing prep and stuff ahead of stream. No problem, Corey. Thanks for being here. Justin 3D, this is the ABBN version 30 um, setup. So it's not stock. Um, just like the LGX, this is running an LGX. Uh, the Bontech LGX extruder. There, there were some tweaks I did for this, um, for this build. Just like I, I ran non-standard steppers at first, the 60 millimeter tall steppers that were horrendously loud. Um, as you've seen it move around today, it is so nice being quiet. <laughs> Tadis, Mitkus, um, mostly PLA printing. I'd probably go Switchwire. Um, it's it's a great printer, unenclosed, and and if you ever want to do 
ABS or whatever, the enclosure is not too bad. I, I covered that in my um, the second part of my uh, my Switchwire build stream um, had the enclosure installation. I haven't started printing the buggy yet. Um, I have done some printing on the Legacy because that's that's the printer I expect to um, do most of the printing on for that. Um, but I haven't had time to go in there and um, really tune a profile for the filaments I want to use. Justin three, I have a, I have a Revo. The hot end itself is elsewhere, but I was part of the Revo beta program. And this is the, this is the 0.8 millimeter nozzle for it. Yeah, thanks for being here, DC. I enjoy doing these. Okay, well, I was on this thing. I was going to do the Z offset. Sanity, I, I don't remember the exact wording that Doc had in Nero's stream yesterday, but it's something to do with can't confirm or deny or I'd have to kill you or something like that. I don't remember. DJ Natty, do you print your hot end mounts out of ABS or carbon fiber nylon? Lately, I've been printing them all just out of ABS. Um, I haven't had any melty duck problems. Um, I've previously printed some, like this mosquito one is printed out of Polymaker PC Max. Their polycarbonate whatever blend they use. And those work well. Uh, over time, they do get brittle though. Um, this is the second one that I printed for this. But it took quite a while. Justin 3D, if you're talking about the Revo, I didn't design any of the mounts. Those were designed by other guys on the team. Yeah, the, the, uh, okay, I'll go back to my, I can't say anything, but it's going to be cool. <laughs> Aster Dreamweaver, the Revo Hardened Nozzle, they have their, what do they call that? Um, ups, up, 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 Abexian, or up, kind of Obsidian, but with an X. That, uh, I do, I, I like to print um, carbon fiber filled filaments. The, that V2 is all um, atomic carbon fiber ABS from the beginning, from like two years ago when I first built it, um, almost two years ago. It's, I used car, that same atomic carbon fiber ABS. I think the, the V0 that's sitting on top of it, um, is the same atomic carbon fiber ABS. So I like to have the option. So I will also be looking forward to an abrasive compatible nozzle for the Revo. Yeah, sanity, very literally. And bright. <laughs> Justin 3D, you really need the small like two millimeter um, zip ties, these itty bitty guys, to to use the the zip tie mounts on the um, on the afterburner. Well, what kind of speeds do I have set up on? Let me see.
this is my purple trident. And let's look at the... I'm going homing speed 120 millimeters and something else. Where was my Z-tilt speeds? Oh, whatever 6600 is. It's significantly faster than I have this set up, though. Oh, I, w I keep getting distracted by chat mode, but I was going to do the Z offset calibration. Kind of speeds do you I'm I've been fine with ABS carbon fiber filament on my builds. As long as it's printed well. Sean Collins, what direct drive would you recommend? Uh the default afterburner is very nice, but I've I've got everything. Everything works. I've got a Galileo on the purple trident. I have LGX on this one. Um I have Bowden on the legacy and the other switch wire. This one's standard afterburner. They all seem to work fine. Low tech Greg, this is a significant change. The 15 millimeters, so I, I cut a longer um, Z probe pin. What did you find impossible in your journey in the dev team until you and the team have done it? I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I, on the spot, I don't really have an answer for that. What did you find impossible? I, I yeah, I, I don't have anything for that right now. Astro Dreamweaver, I've, I've printed a lot of the carbon fiber pet G when I was mostly printing on my Prusa before I before I found Voron. <laughs> before I discovered Voron. Asa Abdrabanabi I'm sorry for butchering that. The very latest version, I think they just pushed a generic 3950 um definition in the latest clipper that's supposed to fix the issues with the um, the the beta 3950 definition I think that just got pushed Corey is clicky more involved to configure than the inductive probe I don't know I, I want to do one of those, but I haven't taken the time to figure out what's involved in doing it. I'm... I need to. I want to do it soon. Justin 3D, will the new Bontech work with Afterburner? You're talking about the mini LGX. Someone is going to make it make it work. Uh, it, it's a tiny package. If the, if the regular one works, I'm sure the, the mini one will work. DJ Natty, I, I think a um, probably the closest thing, and this is just off the top of my head, it may not be a great answer, but um, the Core X Z and how well it works on Switchwire. Um, okay. Let's go here. 
And let's go. I'm terrible at remembering the exact things for commands for these, so I'm, I'm constantly just looking up what I need. I know there's a command to just repeat the last the last one. Oh, that puts me right there. There we go. The LGX mount on ABBN. Any chance you could share the STL? I have LGX link. Yeah, absolutely, Tadis. Are you on Discord? Just shoot me a, shoot me a DM, and I can I can send you the, all the STLs. Um, it, I can send you the the cover and the chain mount and everything. Just re realize you're going to need to cut a screw in order for it to work well. Justin, 3D. What size is your build? For should I switch my single nine linear rail to twelve or dual nine? What size is your build? Corey, that's a good idea, making a text file with commands on your desktop to copy and paste from. But looking it up each time, you, you, you would get catch if anything changes. That's the only thing I can see with that. Yeah, I can't really print anything on this right now. I don't have a... I don't have a slicer. I don't have a profile on this computer. I need to get that set up so I can do that on my streams. Um, I would, I mean, the official response is a single MGN9 is not enough, is not recommended. A high quality one, this printer, it, it's a 250 build. Um, I'm running a single MGM9, no problems, but it's not the official recommendation. So a, switching to a single MGM12 would be the recommendation for you uh, over going to a dual 9. Any parts one should buy if one would like to start right away if something would be released. The the changes that I'm working on for 2.4R2 are almost entirely in STL changes. Um, the only thing would be moving the MGN12 gantry over to officially in the CAD and release files for 2.4. So all that stuff is there. The the, the you just go to the trident repo for it other than that there aren't any parts really that are needed it's maybe a couple of fasteners because the display changed but it's the display that comes from trident Torx Fighter. I have both. I have a Galileo that's set up well and print, printed hundreds of hours on it. Um, this is my only LGX and kind of an update that I've mentioned on the stream before, but right after I got it built, I did the test print on stream with no problems, but further prints, I was getting layer shifts. And it turns out, I don't know if you can see the wear mark there, but I had missed a shim so I had a bearing rubbing right on this printed part. 
Um, so that, some max 3185 PT100 over and under voltage errors I was getting. I don't have a lot of hours on this yet. Um, so I couldn't tell you what issues I might have or not with the LGX and how it compares to prints on the other printers. Um, just this weekend, I, I swapped out the PT1000 um, sensor into the tool head just as a troubleshooting. And if that works well, then I'm going to start printing more things on this and I would have a better idea after that. Jared Cromwell, I have not tried any of the backers. Um, I don't know that I would benefit from them. I, like I said, on on this printer for what I've printed, but especially on the purple Trident, I don't even run a mesh, and I, I get a very consistent um, first layer across the whole bed. The I don't have much problems any problems with the the green v2 i have lots of problems <laughs> with the black v2 this is my original printer but i have a physical like confirmed with a reasonable straight edge bow to the bed it i i can hold this up here and see a significant i mean on the bed and see a significant amount of light in the middle it is it is physically tacoed so i can't say whether anything else is contributing to any first layer issues i have on that guy <laughs> does anyone use a pt1000 on an octopus normal thermistor ports that's what i'm doing right now this one is set up as of yesterday pt1000 plugged directly into the thermistor port it's supposed to be already running the 4.7k resistor or whatever that you need for that right uh, everything i looked up said so so this is there and ready hi daniel we're just finishing up i'm probably it is at three hours now so let's give this just a couple of more minutes and i'm going to sign off um just in 3d i try to do this every sunday and so far for the past two months two and a half months um it's been consistent i've thrown in a, an, an extra stream here or there um, but those won't be consistent. It just depends on what I feel like doing. Yeah, I'm, that's also this, this, um, the plate that I have that's tacoed is just a Mike six plate I bought from the Midwest place, um, uh, with a one-time use credit card. Um, <laughs> it's thick, so, and I, I have a friend with a machine shop that we did the, the, uh, cutting the holes and stuff. At some point I may bite the bullet and just have it machined flat again and see if that helps, but that would require replacing the magnet, which is frankly about ready. Um, it's starting to get a little, a little crusty. Um, but more importantly, is replacing the silicone heater on the underside. No problem, Ken. Yeah, my f quite a f just until just the last couple of streams. Um, my streams have been at noon Pacific time. That ends up eating a lot into my day. So I've been shifting it earlier and I think 10 o'clock is probably where I'm gonna keep it for a while. Um, ideally my Sunday streams would, would be two to three hours long, um, which we're at three hours right now, um, which is good. And we've been done for a while. This is just fun chatting. Um, but that that's probably what I'll aim for is 10 a.m. Sundays. Unless I have something going on, I may have to skip a week here or there. But we'll see. What is your Trident bed mounted? Well, we just mounted the 
Mandela Roseworks kinematic mount system. That's what we did on the second part of the stream today. Just in 3D, the Midwest West Place has been known to be a source of um, problems with credit cards. They, we don't think that it's them themselves, it's, it's whatever processor, but they're not doing anything about it. So, although it's hard to resist their prices, um, the message is use them as a last resort. If you do have to use them, use a, um, a one-time use card number would be the advice. Forks Fighter, I can keep that in mind for a future stream. Absolutely. Especially a quick build. Maybe we can go through a tune-up on, on a printer, run, um, check all the belts, run input shaper, that kind of thing. That can all be done in within an hour. That's good. Good content idea, I think, there. Yeah, I I agree, Zen. It's probably a bad idea. We, we're getting more and more good sources of these beds. Mandela, I, I don't know who else. I don't want to just name drop one company because it, there's probably others, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, I don't know who sells them domestically or wherever you are whatever your domestically is. What part of the world are you at, a Asa? It's really cool to, I, I, I like the, 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 you guys, the audience is from so, so many parts of the world. I, we had Italy a while back. I know I have quite a few of you guys from um, Germany or, or uh, Sanity, you're in, you're in Czech Republic, right? Just in 3D, I'd be going, whenever I'd have a problem with that, I'd be going through every drive for your grub screws, make sure everything's, everything's tight. Um, I, I know we just talked about how do you tell what your belt tension is, but make sure your belt tension is at least consistent across your four, um, your your four drives. A big one is the the Z end stop mount, the plastic housing. Over time, that can get that can loosen up, so make sure that's tight. Make sure the the pin, your your end stop pin. Make sure that you have perfectly flat perpendicular cuts on the ends because if the, if it's if it's rotating in in there it could change where you're where it's hitting on the nozzle or where it's triggering the the micro switch yeah we, we, you guys are from all over the place that's awesome Okay, well, until next time, thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope we um, learned something. I'm, I'm very pleased the lights worked the first time. <laughs> I'm going to put a little VHB tape on that connector and just tuck it out of the way. And otherwise, I think it's done. Um, if I have any thoughts on these, these mounts, I'll, I'll bring them up in a future stream. Otherwise, I'm just going to use them, see how it goes. Um, and those of you that were talking about parts or, or files that you need, don't don't hesitate to DM me on, on Discord. It, once we get into things like if, you, if you're looking for a lot of support, then I might direct you to a, a help ticket in, in our Discord system. But these quick interactions, it's, it's not a problem. I, I just want to help. So thanks again, and I will see you all next week. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye.